Your economic reputation. Hi, I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian economist. Uh, during a recent congressional testimony, John Durham was accused of having a sullied reputation because of his association with President Trump. His full response is the closing statement of today's podcast. For now, I'll summarize the part that gives its name to today's podcast. Quote, I am perfectly comfortable with my reputation, end quote. Are you comfortable with your economic reputation? How are you using your freedom to produce and distribute goods and services to your neighbors to show you love them? Yeah, as I wrote in my little book, Economics in the Christian Worldview, quote, if you love your neighbor, you will supply her with products and services she demands. If you love yourself, you'll make a profit while doing so, end quote. Trying to make everyone happy is a fool's errand. We all must make decisions in life that determine our economic contribution to those around us. Lies, damned lies, and Bidenomics. <laughs> Economist Ronald Coase said, if you torture the data long enough, it will confess to anything. Now, advisors to President Biden actually wrote a speech about how good Bidenomics is. <laughs> a reader of the Wall Street Journal wrote in the comments section, Let's go Brandonomics. <laughs> Thomas Carlyle called economics the dismal science, probably in response to Robert Malthus writing in 1798 that we would run out of food and starve. Uh, Malthus was wrong, and every Malthusian since him has been wrong, which has led to my favorite question to ask of groups. Complete the following sentence. Life was better on Earth before we ran out of far as I know, there's no answer. We've never run out of anything. But that does not stop current day Malthusians from trying to convince us we're going to. But economics is not dismal. Matter of fact, it's really powerful. It's a set of rules, I would argue, that are handed down from God. He gave us the freedom to use our mental acuity to do math and read two-dimensional graphs so we can have the social science we call economics. But as I've often said, there's nothing created good by God that some human has not used for his own personal cause. Freedom can be misused. Such is today's Bidenomics. You know, one of my favorite economics writers is Greg Ipp at the Wall Street Journal. He wrote recently about President Biden, quote, in a memo released this week, his political strategist, Anita Dunn, and Mike Donilon write that Biden faced an immediate economic crisis when he took office in January 2021. Actually, he didn't. End quote from Greg Ipp. Absolute truth. Uh, all truth is relative <laughs> is an absolute statement. So there has to be some truth out there. So go see if, let's go see if we can find some. In the post-Enlightenment era, relativism has taken over. They're trying to divine, define freedom as doing whatever you want. A person is supposedly free to say, I'm a woman trapped in a man's body. And <laughs> we're supposed to not only accept it, but praise it. Carl Truman tracks the history of that foolish claim back to Rousseau in his very good book, The Rise and Triumph of the Modern Self. Yeah, I published a podcast summarizing that idea titled Expressive Individualism. It's podcast number 151. The simple point is this. We can't all have our own truth, nor our own economics. There have to be objective measures. During a rally with union members in Philadelphia recently, President Biden said it was time to end the trickle-down economics theory. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it is, because according to Thomas Sowell, it doesn't exist. Sowell offered a reward to anyone who could cite the author of the theory. He got no takers. It doesn't exist. It's simply a straw man created by opponents of economic growth. During the pandemic, I built a little golf course in the pasture behind our house. It, don't get too excited. It's not very sophisticated. It's pasture golf. <laughs> and the rules vary from day to day, depending on who's playing. I guess you could call it a relativism set of rules. When a grandson is having a bad day, I just let him pick up the ball and throw it. We don't even keep score, but it's our own golf course in our own pasture. 
we would never try to compare our score to another course. But that's what Bidenomics is doing. They're using their freedom to make up their own rules and report scores that have no relevance in the real world of economics. Just the phrase, quote, I created jobs, end quote, from a president is a misnomer. Presidents don't create jobs. The market does. The government has no money. It only takes money from productive sectors of the economy and redistributes it to non-productive sectors. Think about it. If the sector was productive, it would attract its own investment and would not need the help of the government. Uh, quoting Greg Yip again from the Wall Street Journal, quote, President Biden's American Rescue Plan pumped $1.9 trillion of demand into a supply-constrained economy. The result was the tightest job market in memory and a surge in inflation that still hangs over Biden's approval ratings and his prospects for re-election, end quote from Greg Ip. Chinese wisdom. In biblical economic policy, the book I wrote with Sergei Sedamatov, I explained an experience I had in China while attending a seminar on Chinese wisdom. The presenter showed us the eightfold path of Buddhism on a PowerPoint. Right understanding, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. Standing in front of the PowerPoint, he explained, there is no right in China. Huh? There's eight of them on the PowerPoint slide right behind him. But see, that's what life is like in a relativist society. They claim there are those eight right ways, but in reality, the government does whatever it wants, which led me to write in a previous podcast, there are no rights in China because there's no right in China. David Marcus expressed it this way on Fox News recently, quote, when there are two sets of laws in a society, there's no law at all, there's only power, end quote. Now, that ideology is coming to a theater near you in the form of Bidenomics, and it's not a movie you will enjoy. They're saying they're building an economy from the bottom up and the middle out. <laughs> not explain what that means. But in the meantime, the Bureau of Labor Statistics says that real average hourly earnings have fallen 3.16% during the Biden presidency. The working class is falling further behind. Serving two masters. Matthew 6.24 reads, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. The Federal Reserve Bank was established in 1913 with one mandate, sound money. In 1977, the Federal Reserve Reform Act gave the Fed its second mandate to maintain employment. Thus, the Fed is trying to serve two masters, and the two mandates is what's got us into the inflationary mess we're experiencing today. Inflation was too low during the Trump administration, and the Fed was struggling to increase it. You can't please everyone. When I used to teach a seminar on writing a business plan, I would force the authors to state who is not my customer, because if you try to please everyone, you'll please no one. Sun Tzu wrote it this way in his book, The Art of War. If a general sends his troops everywhere, he will be weak everywhere. I summarize it at my Dallas Baptist University classes by stating, the general who thinks he has an army everywhere has an army nowhere. Stop trying to please everyone. DBU athletes enter the Berg Gymnasium under the sign that reads, An Audience of One. It's a chapter title in the book by Oz Guinness titled, The Call, where he explains that as Christians, we have two calls. First, to be a Christian, and second, to do something to build God's kingdom. Don't miss the point. Being comes before doing. I end each of my podcasts with the phrase, Fear God, tell the truth, earn a profit. Because, see, if you fear God, you will fear no man. That means you don't have to please them. If you're pleasing God with your economic achievements, you won't feel the need to find your value in pleasing men. And now, the long promised full quote where John Durham was defending his reputation. He said, quote, My concern about my reputation is with the people who I respect and my family and my Lord. And I'm perfectly comfortable 
with my reputation with them, end quote. Are you? I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian Economist. Fear God, tell the truth, earn a profit. See you next time.